All right. Cats fans, we're back. We're 5-0. and oh. Welcome to Post Game Live. My name is Ben Reeve. This is Post Game Live. I think it's number five. Could be number six. Uh, I get confused with the pre-seasons, but it's 5-0. and oh. uh, It's going very well, this AFL season in 2024. We cannot complain. We cannot complain at all. The Cats today smashed the North Melbourne Kangaroos by 75 points at Kidinia Park. Uh, final result, Geelong 21 goals, 13, 139 to North Melbourne, 10 goals, 4, 64. An absolute drubbing. Uh, could have been a little bit more, but you could always say that. Uh, I think there was a lot of good players from Geelong. There was a couple of good players from North. Uh, probably the result that we all expected. Um but without further ado, let's bring on the first guest. He is the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Paul James. Hello, what's up? Paul. What's up? How's things, friend? What How's things, is friend? up? Five and zero is what's up. Um, um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We've had uh, yeah, five games. I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing, hearing myself. Am I playing the video back somewhere? I don't think I am. I think I am. I, I can hear an echo hear of myself, myself somehow. somehow. But anyway, but anyway, push through. Um, um I'll push through. Push through. So. so the cats, the cats, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, the comments are saying there's an echo as well. Echo as well. Give us a sec. We'll see if we can sort that one out. I'll give you a sec. I'll give you a sec. Try that. All right. Oh, if... I can't hear myself. Oh. That's all right. Good. Um, yeah, I mean, look, good win. Uh, first thing I'll point out is you've you've called it round four in the title, so you already have you oh, already really? some naming convention problems. The video was called round four. <laughs> I can always fix that in post. But uh, that's all right. We can very easily fix it. Um, look, I mean, you're right. Um, it was never really in doubt. Uh, the third quarter was a bit disappointing. I think there was an opportunity, you know, you know for us to to do what a top team does and absolute. And look, don't get me wrong, a 75 point win is still burying an opponent. But the third quarter there, we didn't really progress one way or the other. It was a bit of a nothing quarter. They looked a bit flat. They looked a bit tired. They looked a little bit exhausted in that point and probably a little bit disinterested too. Like, okay, you know, protection mode, avoid injuries, that sort of thing. I'm glad they kind of either got slapped out of it or snapped out of it into that into that fourth quarter because, yeah, the, they dialed the heat back up again and things look pretty good. Um, we could have been top of the ladder <laughs> if, 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 we, if we didn't kind of have that little slump in the third quarter. But... Um, Look, that's fine. It was a good win. Um, I can't really think of any players who performed poorly. Um, and as 100 games, 100 days says, no injuries. That's a real. That's a real important one. Um, but Neil looked amazing. Yeah, there was a whole. But there was a lot of wins. Um, Sully was great in his in his debut. Things were good. It was good. Good time to be a cat fan. Yeah, there's. I was just saying to my partner Beck beforehand that you couldn't really name a Geelong player that that didn't go. They played badly, I should say, today. Uh, yeah. There was there's probably half a dozen, maybe that were just Less were just good. okay, <laughs> uh, just good. Probably not worthy of getting omitted um, or managed. Is is the new favourite way of doing it? Um, yeah, no, I think everyone was pretty good. There was a couple of absolute superstars. Uh, I'm trying to say, Hawk was I, omitted. That, Hawk, <laughs> we're using the word managed or omitted. You're saying Hawk was omitted. <laughs> Hawk was not omitted. He was. He was definitely. <laughs> We don't, we never, Hawkins will never get omitted as long as he keeps playing. Uh, yeah, yeah you, you mentioned Sully, uh, O'Sullivan. Great to see him get a, a game finally. I thought it might have come a little bit earlier than round five, um, but he's got it and he'll probably go back to the VFL after this now. With Popped down for a sneaky shot on goal. He which did. He missed, but <laughs> it was nice <laughs> to see. Uh, Jezza, just go, doing Jezza things against North Melbourne. Um, We've got we've got Seb from um, Twelve Rows back on shortly. He'll, he'll tell us all about how North went um, from a North point of view. But uh, now Jezza just he's just keeps doing Jezza things, doesn't he? Um, yeah, uh, I mean this was this was Jezza of the first half of twenty twenty three all over again when he was he was completely up and about and he was in form and he's you know kind of untouchable for a while there and we're really starting to see that in the last couple of weeks the way he's just getting up the ground doing what he wants. So I did think there was a possibility with Hawk out he might have played a bit more of a a stay at home forward kind of role. Not, I mean, I don't think he can ever quite stay at home, but a bit more based out of the goal square. But no, he just kind of played his usual role and drifted up the ground and would catch the opponents out going the other way. It was, it was brilliant. It was a, it was a classic Jesse performance and obviously kind of beat up on a, on a lower rung team. But sometimes you just need to do that, right? Yeah. But you got it. You just got it. And I think North probably would have expected us to do that as well. I, I thought 
Cats fans probably would have been a bit disappointed if we had won the game by 25, 30 points. Uh, yeah. Anything, you know, it comes off as really arrogant, and I appreciate that for any North. I know Seb's in the, in the waiting room waiting to come on in a minute, but uh, it can come off as a little bit arrogant. But we're 4-0. We four North hadn't won a game. You'd expect to, to smash them, especially at home as well. Um, yeah, I mean, Hawkins not being there, I didn't think it was going to impact the side too much. I, Shannon Neal was just bursting at the seams to, to get a chance to come in and, and do what he and does. He took, it. he took it. He played well. He played really well. I'm sure there'll be some bit of love on the on the chat uh, for him. I think Corey in the chat was saying, I've put this up before. Yeah, Corey. Uh, be in a, yeah, Corey. Be in a position, better position, 5-0. 100%. Um, I'll, just, I'll just respond to 100 games, 100 days comment with Grime being managed in the second half. I've gone and checked the... Um, the time on ground, he's played. He's played eighty-two percent, which is in line, if not kind of on the higher end for most of the cats. So he might have just um, had a quieter block through the second half, a little less in the action, but he was he was still still out there. Where are we? Um, yeah, somewhere somewhere in the middle in terms of I guess how all the the, the twenty-three and their game time. Not a crazy crazy low number, but you know, look after the bloke. You know, we've got a few big games coming up, so. Try and get your players in the right place. And when when you are in a position where you are smacking a team like that, you you can take these opportunities to maybe just reduce the game time for certain individuals. The, the club has been so good historically at managing its players, not only you know in, in the way that we saw Hawkins kind of get the week off this week, but even within a game, like if the circumstances allow it, they'll start benching players for longer periods just to ensure that they're, they're getting some downtime and they're you know looking after the hamstring or whatever it might be that is a potential ailment at the time. Just just minimize uh, minimize those hours as much as possible so that they're cherry ripe for the games where we might need them to play ninety percent game time instead. Exactly. I did want to highlight Jackie's comment. Welcome, Jackie. Thanks for joining us. Jackie's uh, uh, wanted to give uh, Mark O'Connor a bit of a shout out. Best career form. I love Mark O'Connor today. I, I had him. It's, at one point, I had him best, uh, second best on ground after Jezza. I thought he was terrific. Um, I thought he was amazing all day. Hopefully, a few other people see it as well. I don't know. What do you think of Marco's game? No, I thought, he, I thought he was great. Um, yeah. And like he did that with only three quarters game time. Like he he really, I mean, he made every post a winner, I guess, throughout the, throughout the entirety of the game. Could you hear the Irish music, the little jig coming through on the TV, Paul? I'm assuming you watched it on the game. Um, I saw... Bits of it on the TV. I saw good chunks of it on my phone. Um, so, no, I didn't hear any Irish music, unfortunately. It was uh, lots of fun. They always play that every time an Irishman kicks a goal. So, uh, everyone, it was great. Everyone in the crowd at the game was was clapping along. Uh, and he had another shot later in the piece as well uh, where he didn't quite make it. But uh, it would have been fantastic if we had another opportunity to do that. So, uh, anyone at the game, <laughs> hopefully everyone was clapping along. I thought it was fantastic. Um, who else? So, you question. didn't forget- you didn't think anyone sort of struggled today uh, at all. Like you thought, pretty much every cat held their own. Yeah, I think I think everyone everyone did their job. Um, Ollie Henry was maybe a little bit quieter, but I think that's okay when you've got both um, mm. both Jezza, of course, and uh, our mate. The well, I suppose he's kind of he hasn't really got the title for the the award now, the Hoops Award anymore. But but uh, Brad Close, obviously, like when those two are kicking ten, 10 between them, it does mean that the output can drop a little bit for Ollie. He was still quite impactful in areas, even if he wasn't actually in possession. Um, he was maybe the only one that had maybe a genuinely down day by his own standards, but I'm not I'm not at all concerned by it in the slightest. So, Comment here from either moment says, uh, critics will say we've only beaten teams uh, below 11th on the ladder. Uh, or, so, sorry, I, I summarized summarize there. How do we answer those critics? Just keep winning. Um, Just keep- I mean, it's it's pretty simple. This like if those comments are being made, if those kind of I guess statistics are being thrown at you, and it's the midpoint of the season, it's a very different sort of conversation. But when you're in the first four to five rounds, uh, some of the uh, were any of these teams part of the opening round stuff? I'm trying to think now. Uh, any opening round teams? Don't think so. But you know, four to five games or thereabouts have been played anyway. Mm. Um, you're beating them, then well, there's a good chance they are going to be kind of towards the bottom half of the ladder. That's just a natural part of the thing when you haven't had that many matches at that particular stage. So, so no, I don't really make any anything of it yet. Um, and I think what they've demonstrated throughout those games would suggest that they're still playing like a top eight team, like doing what needs to be done. Um, the dogs have had a bad couple of weeks 
Um, Luke Beveridge, look out for enough of the week this week. I was going to um, say, you better put him in the – mate, I, was, be on the short list. I was a little bit late jumping in here in the first place because I was just finishing recording that one. So um, <laughs> stay tuned for that, everyone. That'll go live shortly. But, um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're playing better than a team that's – what are they, two and three, three and two? Well, Something like, like that. They're, like, they're yeah, middle Probably two team. and three to be where they are on the ladder. So Yeah. There's a, there's a bunch in yeah, that I don't make any of it yet. There's a, there's, a, I think we're, we're starting to see a top eight now, I think. Uh, there's there's yeah. still maybe three or four that can push for a spot in the eight, but I pretty much I think we pretty much know our, our bottom six and ha- and the, and that sort of top four. I think Geelong. It's still early days, but you'd have to think Geelong will be there and about um, around that top four. Yeah, I think the Just interesting thing will be when we start, and it's kind of the middle of the season and 100 games, 100 days kind of highlights that we have a, a great draw to the end of the season. The middle is when we really start dealing with the the teams that, for the most part, are uh, the ones that are going to be vying for those top spots with us. Hell, we're going to start to see it over the course of the next few weeks with GWS, Brisbane, Carlton. Like, they're all, they're all starting to pop up. So if we, you know, get two or even three out of three of those, then I think that changes the entire conversation. But right now we're beating who we can beat like they're the oppositions that you're facing and what, what more can you do right exactly we, we do have a tough month coming up and I'll, I'll just run you through uh these games paul just to get your comment before we um before we uh, let you go and i'll get seb on but out. yeah i'll kick you out we've got brisbane <laughs> carlton carlton uh melbourne and port adelaide so a tough month ahead a tough month are we winning all of those games are we winning half of those games are we going on a nine game losing streak like we did <laughs> in the 90s after we won the first um, five. I think it was the 90s. Yeah. God, I still have nightmares about that. So it's, it's Brisbane over there. It's Carlton in at the G, Melbourne the G, Port at GMHBA. Look, I mean, it, it really continues on for six weeks because you've got Gold Coast afterwards up there. Then you play the Giants um, in Geelong. So really there's a block of six games in a row and Sydney aren't even far after that. Like we, we are tackling a lot of those kind of top teams. I don't know I bundled Gold Coast in there, but I rate them. Um, and we'll continue to rate them. But uh, look, I think if we focus on that next month specifically, because that's what you were talking about. If we if we take two or three out of those, I think that's that's great. But I don't see there being any reason why we can't win all four at the same time. Again, we're, like we've already been managing the players. You see it with Hawks today. You see it with what happens with the game time for some of the players. They're trying to get themselves in a position they can hit Brisbane next week hard. Um. And hopefully they can snuff that little bit of confidence that Brisbane's building back up out again because they are a threat and I'd rather see them struggling to make the eight than uh, gaining some momentum again. I think if anyone's going to knock them off, well, Carlton knocked them off at the Gabba and I think some, someone else might have too, but Geelong does play the Gabba reasonably well. We don't well, yeah. necessarily win every time we go up there, but we, we, we're very competitive every time we go there. So I'll give us a red-hot crack. I think that's a coin flip type game. I don't, don't let the bookies convince you otherwise. They'll probably say that Brisbane's the favourite. Oh Paul, yeah, look, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking at it now, and they are saying that Brisbane's the favourite. Yeah, of course, they, of course they are. Of course they are. Um, I think then I think we're playing Brisbane on Saturday night. So um, hopefully, if you Cats fans yes. will be able to get some time off and and fly up there and watch that game. Oh, unfortunately, I won't be there. I'll be watching it on on the TV. Uh, yeah, I'll like be in Tassie. Of, so, oh, very nice. I think Jake will be getting married. Out, uh, Jake from the Chaps Chat Cats could be getting married. Congratulations, Jake and your partner. Um, on could be is it because you don't know the date or like what? <laughs> oh, he said it was. I think he said it was Saturday. So, um, and oh, the I reason I, it up, is, I, was just, I was just about to give you show a plug uh, the the VFL show on our Patreon site. Um, free memberships, by the way, everyone at the moment. If you're keen to check that out, um, VFL team played. At two o'clock today, um, but Jake won't be doing the VFL <laughs> next. I don't know. I don't know what the arrangement's going to be. Who's going to step in and do that? But um, he, he's been doing that every every week, and the boys had a good win today. So I'm looking forward to catching up on that after, or maybe later tonight if I can. Um, but yeah, free free trial memberships on the Patreon site, everyone. I should really have the link somewhere on here, but um, I'm sure I'll post it somewhere else later on. We'll figure it out. Or Paul, if you hang Sorry, around, take, you can give me, give find the link and you. post it somewhere in the notes. Mate, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get Seb on. Um, kick, kick me out. Kick you out. Hopefully, you hang the, around a little bit. The link is and... now in the comments on both YouTube. Oh, very well. nice. You're good. And I believe we have the. Uh, I might post it again, but we do have the. If you want to jump on and have a chat tonight on the cams, uh, let me know what your thoughts are on the game. Uh, we'd love to have you on, especially for if you're a first time caller uh, or a listener or watcher, whatever whatever you are. Mate, 
Go Cats. We'll go again next week. See you, mate. See you, buddy. All right. He's been waiting very patiently. I'll get Seb on from North Melbourne. Big North Melbourne man. How's it going, mate? Oh, yeah, it's good. It's good, Ben. It's, look. You it feeling good? Too, well, it wasn't too surprising, was it? I think everyone saw something like that on the cards. Um, and, look, I've had some worse nights down at the Cattery. Last time I was there was uh, 2019. It was a cold Saturday yep. night. Um, we kicked one goal for the night. So <sighs> I remember that. Ouch. This was a lot better. I didn't, didn't get down there today, but... Um, Look, there are some small positives to take away from a North point of view. Um, but you are right. Like, if Geelong didn't give us a touch-up the way we're travelling or where you want to be travelling, it's sort of a slight cause for concern. Um, just to give you an idea, it was 2021, we played down in Tassie. Yep. You only beat us by 20 points. Despite the fact you finished top four that year and obviously went on and lost to Melbourne in that prelim, it was only 20 points. The next year, there were two absolute drubbings. And obviously, you went on to win the flag. So, even though a win's a win, there's a different sort of win when you're playing, when you're aspiring for that top echelon. Whereas, if you're a team that's, if you're an Essendon or a St Kilda or, or the Dogs or those sorts of teams that are trying to get into the finals and get to that next point, every win's a win and, and you take it and you can build on it. Whereas, Geelong have been there, done that for so long, they need to be on top of their game, doing things like this. And then, as you mentioned earlier, it gives you time to stop and reset and rest Hawkins and Jezza will get a rest when he needs it and all that sort of stuff, which helps you keep your cherry ripe. Are we – you've been sitting, waiting, listening to the first part of the show with Paul on here. Are we coming across as arrogant Geelong flogs right now? Um, and it's the Geelong Football Club, club coming across as flogs. Uh, it it – I sometimes I've, I've got to check myself and, uh, and appreciate how lucky we are to support the club, but and maybe not go too silly. But it is fun when you have a win, and you can't help it a little bit when you go five and zero. Oh. Um, I don't know. Apologies you've, if we are. You've got, well, you've got to enjoy it. I, I can tell you firsthand because I, I I grew up through the nineties, and every week I went north were oh. a real chance to win, and we did win most weeks. And suddenly I was, I've been fourteen, fifteen, two thousand two, two thousand three. We stopped winning, and I thought, okay, well, eventually this will get better. And we went all right through the the 2010s. We had a few, couple of good years, and got to through to a couple of prelims. But we never expected to win all the time through there. And just now, I just you can't see a win. So there is a level of arrogance. If my co-host was here, he'd be telling you, like, yeah, he, he he's a, he's a Saints fan. So ever since 2009, he cannot let that go. Um, but look. To give you some perspective, north of – we haven't won a wooden spoon for how long and then we won two and finished seven eighth. Geelong's worst finish in a year is 12th. That's the lowest you've ever finished on the ladder. Like technically yeah. there's a wooden spoon back when there were 12 teams, but that's your – which you sort of had last year in just a down year. So there's a level of arrogance, but when you're 5-0, and oh, what can you do? I mean, you just got to keep winning and enjoying it. Oh, I think I think we'll definitely enjoy it. Um, I want to I want to ask you about oh, a couple of well, comment in the chat um, from either moment. Did you go to the game today? I think you said you weren't able to get there earlier. No, nah, I right? didn't get down there. I've got PTSD from last time. But no, I had oh. the kids. I had the kids running oh, around. Great. So um, this is not. I'm not too devo about not getting to these games. Um, I think if we're up and about, I'm more than happy to get down. Love going to the Oppo's home get home games and getting in amongst it. The Geelong crowd don't like me. Um, they seem to take it a little bit personally when I'm a bit more tongue in cheek, but that's how you're now. You, you, they've got you down the the, um, the river end of the of the stadium. There's a whole section uh, when the Saints came down a few weeks back. They were gee, they were loud. North North fans weren't very loud today. I have to say, um, they they got up and about a couple of times, but it was it was pretty quiet. Um, didn't hear much much from the North fans uh, behind the goals. It wasn't as many as the Saints either. Um, but I wanted to ask you about McKercher. Unfortunately, got subbed out around quarter time or start of the second or whatever it was. Mm. Um, like he's gone to hospital with some with a bit of a rib issue, which is a, a bit of a worry because he's quite promising. Yeah, he's been arguably our best recruit for the year. That's counting the seasoned experienced players in Fisher and uh, Stevens who came down from Sydney. Um, and yeah, I. 
it didn't look like a, that big an incident. It's just it was Jeremy Cameron who ran into him, and yeah. he's just a big, strong unit. Yeah. So it's not positive, and and he's been great to start the year. Just he's getting the time in, and he's learning, and we we need better users of the football. I think that was pretty obvious today. Just we had a lot of enthusiasm early, but we just couldn't hit the targets, and and Geelong of all teams really make you pay when you turn it over. So I haven't heard anything on the back of that. Um, whether he's all right, but yeah, it, it wasn't great to see given we're at a void for talent at the moment. Yeah, what did you think of Sheasel's game? Thirty-eight touches, uh, hitting targets inside fifty, left, right, center. Um, that was, I thought he was probably one of your better players, I'd say. The other, the other fellow, um, Biggie, uh, Biggie Newen, second gamer, I think. Yeah, good. Sheasel's that was his best game for the club. Sheasel, um, you got to factor in. I think he had some big games last year. His first game, he had thirty-four touches. But he's playing West Coast and things like that. Whereas this is Geelong opposition territory. Team struggling around you, and he's getting it and using it. And he just there's a Pendlebury like element to him where he gets it and seems to have so much more time, whereas everyone else doesn't have the time. Um, and those goals we get in the first quarter, um, and short of a great chain of handballs that Geelong had right on the death of that quarter, we were down by a goal, and he directly yeah. caused two of those goals hitting up a target inside fifty. Now, if you've watched any of North over the last three years, we've had Larky one out as a forward, Zerha trying to be a, a key forward who's not quite, and he really doesn't know where he is, and we just bomb it in. And the reality is it doesn't work against most teams when you've got Stuart, Henry. Um, uh, who else have you got down there? You got someone uh, else. Normally we've got Kola Dashney down there who plays on the bigs and the smalls. Um, he said Jack Henry. I'm thinking Sandy of Guthrie. Guthrie. Sa- yeah, Zach. Zach Guthrie, big baby Guthrie. He's had a had an average game today. He wasn't fantastic. He wasn't terrible. Yeah, he didn't stand out, but those guys all know how to intercept Mark. So if yeah. Stewart's in position to take it, he takes it. If he's not, he takes the body of the opponent and the other guy comes across. And I just, I just pull my hair out when we start doing it. It's hard on the players because they're under pressure. They've got to do something with it. The natural reaction is to bomb it in, but... It's such a difference when Sheasel gets it, stops, pivots, hits up a target where only that target can get it. It's not us doing a good contested mark. It's right in the spot where I think it was Larky. I think another one was Ford or Curtis, you know, just right where they need it. Um, if, if not for him, we'd be at a loss. Yeah. You're probably a year or two away from him having a few mates really to – I mean, you can't because you can't just rely on the one guy because he's not going to have – career best games every week, is he? Um, he's going to have some down games, and then what happens then? Like, is anyone else going to stand up? And George, Georgie Wardlaw, he's a, he's a gun, but he maybe probably hasn't taken the next step. I don't know, is that he, fair to say this year so far? He hasn't got, he hasn't got the fitness base. So yeah. he missed a lot of preseason from his first year last year, and then he's he, like he's injury prone, and that's, that's one of the biggest concerns around him. I think his ability and everything he can do with the ball without it, his speed, Everything there's great. The endurance will get there, but he's got to stay healthy to then build on the endurance. Um, I think the one that went under the radar for a lot of people, I think he's starting to get some recognition now, is Tom Powell. Uh, so I he was him. drafted. Yeah, he was drafted the same year as Horn Francis. We had pick one. I think he was pick thirteen, um, and he he just he also seems to have a bit of time, a bit of space, and he picks the right option. He doesn't give it to the guy who's under pressure, so he's not under pressure. He puts it out in front of someone else out wide or running, um, and he's starting to find more of it. He's just got that – it just added some strength over sort of three off-seasons, um, and he's another one who who's sort of a running mate for, for Sheasel. Um, I think the biggest thing no one's talking about, and the comment earlier was right, the Cats have played all these teams that are ranked 11th, 12th, 17th, 18th now. Um you know, and people are going to criticise the Cats for that and they can do it all they want, but you can only play who you, who's in front of you. We've played uh, first, second, seventh, eighth and tenth. Gee. And the team, then tenth, tenth is Brisbane, you know. <laughs> like they're the tenth side. They're coming off a grand final loss. Opening rounds really screw, uh, skewed the fixture and no one yeah. knows who's really good or not. And that's the toughest schedule you could have given us as a young team. Now, if we got some teams that were lower down, we got Hawthorne this week, so... There's a chance. There's a real chance. Yeah, that'll um, finish off the weekend. Uh, I think the Sunday twilight game, North yeah. versus Hawthorne, both under both um, 
well, haven't, haven't, haven't had a win. So. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it's just a really tough fixture. No one's talking about it. Everyone's saying we've got all these picks and no one's doing anything. And the reality is what were we supposed to do with that lineup? Like, were we supposed to go and beat the Giants in round one up there? Were we supposed to beat Geelong in Geelong? Like, no. Where were the wins going to come? It, it's Fremantle at Marvel, yes, but it turns out they're a lot better than we thought. And we still played yeah. well. And we're having lots of patches this year. Like, we were shell-shocked. It was three goals, two to no score in this game. And we got it back to sort of level pegging. And then you pulled away in the second quarter, fair enough. But then... I think you won the second quarter by a goal, eight points or something. So we've had patches. It, Brisbane belted us, but we, the third quarter, I think we won. So No, I don't, don't think you won any quarter. I could be wrong about no, that. No, no, uh, when we played Brisbane, we didn't win one oh, today. Sorry, sorry. But when we played Brisbane, we did win the third quarter by a point. But we've been able to stop and get ourselves back into things, which we couldn't do last year. Like It was just impossible. So there are signs there and just the fixture's been like really harsh. So... What do you expect them to do? Comment in the chat, Seb. Um, hundred games, hundred days. Uh, plug his channel if he has one. Uh, twelve rows. Uh, twelve rows. Well, twelve rows back. If I got that right, yeah, twelve rows back. We, we have a channel that there's not, it's not much of a channel at the minute. There's a podcast, Spotify, Apple. You'll get a podcast every week. Um, the channel is something where well, I'm trying to work on and, and find something there but there's a weekly podcast so feel free to check us out and have a listen there's a saints fan on the other end who yeah he's he's one eye as one eyed as they come <laughs> i've listened to you your potty plenty of times it's good definitely good value very insightful and um and it's it's different it's different to our channel or and our, our podcast it was we're very geelong biased so uh it is interesting and i think you guys are pretty good at trying to keep your bias out of it as much as you can uh, well, that's that's my opinion anyway. Um, oh, but I, I enjoy that. Yeah, yeah I, I enjoy listening to your stuff. Um, so check a, them out. Yeah, I was going to say even if I have a North bias, we're not playing. We're not playing in a final. Like, there's been nothing to <laughs> to have a bias about. I've, I can't say we're going to come in and win this game, and it doesn't matter. We 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 just we've just been struggling. So well, hopefully one day I'll do a podcast when we're in the eight or something like that. But that remains to be seen. Uh, are you? Are you feeling okay about playing Geelong twice this year? So I think 100 games, 100 days in the chat says, I, and I, I forgot about this, that somehow, I don't know how, but the Cats have got the draw from heaven this year. Uh, and again, no offense, um, but we're playing you guys a bit later on in the year as well. So that's not great. I think that'd probably be a Marvel game, I'm guessing, or a, or a Tassie yeah, game. Uh, let's, I would say it's Tassie. Tassie yeah, 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 Blackstone yeah. Arena. Um, Look, it's not ideal, but I mean, you, you, I, I think we get caught up in the who plays who twice because it all comes out in the wash. You know, the of best course. teams end up on the top and they've played some twice. And if a team does get to play North, Hawthorne, um, and West Coast twice this year and they finish seventh or eighth, they just get bounced in the first round every year. Well, that's Essendon played the Dogs in a final down in Tassie. Um, it was 21. Um, and they got belted by the dogs, but Essen and I think Essen had played the double up games against the worst teams. And I mean, it just it, it just gives us something to aim for. So we're coming up. We've lost you by seventy five at in Geelong. We're going to play you down in Tassie. We do. Well, we did used to play this ground all right. So let's try and lose by seven or eight goals. We'll, you know, let's try and do a little bit more win a quarter or something like that. It, it gives you something to aim for, but. I mean, yeah, you, you play. We, we get to play West Coast and Hawthorne twice, so yeah. Well, there you go. A chance for some wins for us, so you got to take the good with the bad. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully, you guys absolutely torch Hawthorne next week because, as you know, this is a Geelong channel. We don't like Hawthorne. Um, yeah, we we'd very much like you to actually put Hawks to the sword by eighty or something like that. Get your first win of the year, and um, everyone have Sam Mitchell in the gun. <laughs> In the hot uh, seat. I think we're a chance. Um, I had I had West Coast winning today, and they did that quite handily against Richmond. And I think this is the chance for us to get one on the board. But I hope so. Yeah, look, it's a chance to go in and expect us to do something, which is just as rare in itself for me. But um, no, nah, the cats that that was as expected today. Um, Before I let you go, where do you think? 
what do you think how the season's going to pan out for the Catters? Do you is it going to continue on something like it has been? Clearly, we're not going to go through the season undefeated, but um, but do you think we'll probably still be ho- higher than expected? Like most pundits had us finishing tenth to tenth to twelfth. Uh, didn't have us in the top eight. Do you see us in the top eight? I'm assuming most people have changed their tune on that, but you see us finishing. Whereabouts do you see the Cats, um, how the season plays out and finishing on the ladder? Well, the platform you've built is a top four. That's that's a result you, you're you certainly capable of. And you've got a block, a block of games coming up now, Brisbane, Carlton, Melbourne, Port Adelaide. Um, I, I don't have the Suns on the same level as Paul. And then you've got the Giants. In those games... And given you'll get a couple in Geelong, which is quite handy, you if you can get through four and two, that puts you at nine and two on the year. Even if you get through three and three, that's eight and three. And that's just that's just the spot you need to be. Um because then you do have some more winnable games coming up, like Richmond, Essendon, Hawthorne, Dogs North, Adelaide. Like I'm looking at all those games thinking you got West Coast to finish off the year. Like there's there's sixteen wins, you, you can see it there, you, you can see it there. Um, it just depends on whether it's seventeen to eighteen and a home top two finish, and that really sets you up, especially if you get a interstate in the first week, or if it's fourteen, yeah. fifteen, sixteen because you drop a few and and look, I hate to be the one to say it, but older players likely to get hurt. It was a good idea keeping danger out. Um, probably shouldn't have thrown that out there in the universe, but it's just a it's just a thing that may happen, and, and it's a common theme for all premiers. They don't run into lots of injuries. Melbourne didn't have a single one in twenty one, um, twenty two. You guys went through fine. Collingwood had not a single one last year, and, and start the year mixed days out, and they they fall in a heap. Um, so you've built the platform, and at this point with Geelong's history, anything that's not a top four would be a little bit disappointing probably from a supporter's point of view um, because you really sort of want that to to go on to win win another flag. I appreciate those thoughts, mate. Um, I'll let you go, but I just want to encourage everyone in the chat who, who may be watching um, later on on the – after after we've um, after this episode's been published, maybe check out your show. Uh, it, is, it is tough coming on a – on another team's channel after after a loss, uh, a big loss as well. Um, but I, I appreciate gi- you giving us a bit of insight into how your team's travelling and, and where you think we're going as well. So, uh, yeah, much appreciated, mate. Uh, thanks for having me and all the best for the rest of the year. Thanks, buddy. Hopefully we'll get you back on again after we play you in Tassie a bit later on. Yeah, Hopefully it's yeah. a little bit closer to the game, that one. So, yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> exactly. Take it easy, mate. Thanks, Ben. All right. Now I've got... Amanda, who's been waiting very patiently. Hello, hello. Hello. Oh, my washing's in the background. I just realised we can see oh. that. <laughs> what have I got? I've got my bobble heads in the background. I think you can see them. Um, I did. Cool. I was going to buy a Jezza one today, but I, I, it was too busy in the catch up. I wasn't going to line up forever. So, yeah, fair. But how's that win for you? Yeah, good. Considering I decided to um, not make the trek today. Um, so I was sitting at home watching, and I was a bit like, oh, maybe I should have gone. <laughs> it was good fun, I'll tell you that. It was uh, yeah. the crowd. I mean, the crowd was a little bit flat, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anyone else in the chat was at the game. Um, but, yeah, it was, a bit, it was a bit flat. Probably a couple of times uh, we got up and about, uh, mostly at the Joel Selwood end. They were, they mm-hmm. were singing chants yeah. and doing songs. They were having a good old time, getting up and about some of the umpiring decisions and um, – and everyone got up and about when um, Mark O'Connor kicked the goal and they, they started the Irish jig. That was good fun. Yeah. Everyone was clapping along to that. Um, but, yeah, it was a bit flat. And the North supporters didn't bring any energy either, unfortunately. I was hoping to get a little bit more. It was interesting to see the Saints the week before really get fired up. And it was like, hang yeah. on, what's going on? We're not used to this. We're used to 50, 50 opposition supporters. You know? Yeah, they were loud. I, I was at that yeah. and I was not far from where that big pocket of St Kilda supporters were and they were they were loud and up and about. And I think with today, obviously I wasn't there, but I think I, I saw today that it's the one of the longest ongoing streaks against another team is Geelong versus North Melbourne. And, I mean, North have been the, the bottom of the comp for some time. They're getting mauled. I just, I mean, how up and about can you be 
really like exactly it yeah. Uh, yeah i i i'm probably a little bit a little bit harsh um <laughs> Saints fans have probably been there and about, and probably believing that maybe they're close, uh, which which tends to energise your fan base a little bit. But yeah. poor old North, they've struggled. The best thing that's happened is, and I don't rate the guy at all, but for North supporters, the best thing that's happened to them is probably getting Alistair Clarkson. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, don't like the bloke at all. But um, yeah. anyway, it's been a tough few years. Reasons. <laughs> exactly. Uh, who, did, who stood out for you today watching the game on, on the telly, did you say? Yeah, yeah, watched, watched at home and I loved Shannon Neal today. I was so impressed. I was so excited gotcha. um, for such a big guy as well. I actually made a comment to a friend that, like, he, he runs like a gazelle. Like, he runs, he's so athletic and so smooth and, you know, some of the bigger guys are not always the best movers and can be a bit clunky around the ground, but I I thought he was great from what we saw. So I'm really excited that, you know, if we do have a a, a hawk needing to be managed and, and rested and I know perish the thought that he's getting on in his career, but it is nice that I, I would feel comfortable knowing that that Shannon Neal is there and ready. So that yeah instilled a huge amount of confidence in me. I loved his game today. He was he was terrific today. Three goals. I was glad he got a goal early. I think he kept yeah. the goal in the first quarter, uh, and then that that goal uh, running in towards goal and, and bumped off. I can't remember his opponent's name, but he just yeah. bumped him. It was like yeah. hundred kilos. Just stuck his elbow in, and he's he's gone flying in another direction. That was yeah. terrific. And uh, he, it put him so far. I can't remember who that opponent was either, but the distance that it gave him to run onto that was yeah, and that's smart. Like. That, that's smart footy. Like, he, he knew what he was doing there, and I, yeah, really loved that. He was um, – I was really happy for – I think it was game six for him. So it's been a, yes. been a tough – been tough for him to get a game at the club when you've got two Coleman medalists. Um, Hawkins will probably break the club's game's record in a few weeks. It's going to be and it's going to be hard for him to, to, get, to get opportunities. But do you think – it's going to be tough, but do you think he can – Play in the ruck as well. Um, I'm assuming there'll be times where uh, Stanley and maybe Conway or either be both unfit or maybe out of form. Is 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 the ruck where it's at? He, he had a couple of goes through there today. You know, I just I want mean, to get in games. That's all. We know, we know how much over the the years under Chris Scott. We know how much he likes to sort of throw a throw an odd ruck combo in there, and he's not afraid to change that up. Like we have seen that on and off for a long time. I mean, maybe that's the way that we get game time into him because I I find it fascinating that we're in this position again where, okay, we sort of dropped off a bit last year and then all of a sudden the the list is just brimming and full and it is this whole who makes way and when everyone's fit, what do we do scenario. And it seems it seems cruel for some to me, so it seems unfair. And also you do want to get the the game and the legs into the guys like a Shannon Neal. So, I mean, maybe that that's an option. I think a hand will probably get forced at some stage, Amanda, don't you reckon? Like it'll there'll be an injury yeah. at some point. There'll be a, a, a spate of injuries, really, uh, where there'll be five or six guys that are down and, and some guys will get a game uh, because – there's no one else. Uh, it happens at every club. Luckily, we're five games into this year, and it hasn't happened to us just yet. And hopefully, it doesn't. But you'd think at some point in time, there's going to be some opportunities for some players uh, to to maybe maybe not make a debut, but to come back into the side. Like um, Jake did his. Uh, I mentioned it earlier in the show, but Jake did his review of the um, the VFL uh, win today, and, and he actually yeah. sent me some. Um, I've just got a few here to read out. He said he was telling me about some of the AFL listed players. He said Toby Conway absolutely dominated in the ruck. How are we going to get Toby Conway back in this team? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Mick Hardy just keeps knocking on that door. He's knocking on that door. Yeah. Um, is he going to get a chance? I don't know. Do you, do you see Mitch Hardy getting a chance this year? I don't know. I I think it would take for that kind of that really bad run of injuries that we that you might get and that you know like what a richmond's got at the moment where it just seems like they can't they don't have any fit players like i don't know maybe that's the scenario but i just can't i don't know that i see it ahead of that middle pack of the sort of best 24 to 28 players i don't i don't know if he if he fits in there or not 
maybe round 23 when we play West Coast at home when everyone gets rested. <laughs> maybe. Like last year. <laughs> yeah. uh, that might be the opportunity to, to play a few. Um, we've had yeah. two debutants so far. Um, I think there'll be another couple to come. I don't know who they'll be, but um, but you've got to get, you know, what about Sean Manor? Are we going to get Sean Manor? He kicked three goals today in the VFL. Um, James yeah. Willis took mark of the year in the VFL today. <laughs> he, he's coming on pretty well. And and my boy, uh, uh, Lawson Humphreys, I, I like what I'm seeing from Lawson Humphreys. I really want him to go okay. Um, yeah. He he looks great, he, the way he moves around the footy field. Uh, so there's a lot of guys to come in. I won't go through all the VFL teams, as I said. Jake, um, Jake's talked about that plenty on on the um, on the show on the on the Patreon, but yeah, how do you get all these guys in, Amanda? I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I, I I don't know. And even if you look at like if we talk about Path for a second, like it, it was a big question mark over his career, and then he's found this this way back in again. I know he's a Premiership player, and it, but last year wasn't the the time no. for him and and we didn't no. really know where he was going to end up and he's had this window in and like uh, not once have I been like mm, I I'm really happy with with path slotting in where he has so I don't, uh, I don't know where these where everyone else gets an opportunity I don't know there's there's blokes like you said path it was one Jack Bowes was another I thought he was probably on the fringe I thought yeah. Tui would definitely be on the fringe and he's yeah. one of them. I thought his time was starting to come to an end and and surely if there was opportunities to play a younger guy, they would. Uh, Oshin Mullen, yeah, he's done nothing wrong. Uh, Mitch Nevitt starting to turn the corner a little bit uh, yeah. as well. Um, Jack Bowes, I think in the chat, 100 games, 100 days, he played. Yeah. He's probably going to be in a lot of people's votes today, Jack Bowes. A couple yeah. of 23-odd uh, touches or something like that, I think he kicked. But, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. it's, it's a really tough one. Did you did you see the um, Ollie Dempsey nearly mark of the year today? Would have, I would know. Have when it's not if like when when is he going to when is he going to take that mark of the year? <laughs> oh, Surely but, soon. Oh, because that was almost identical to to last week in Adelaide. Yep. Um, he wants that car. I don't know if there is a car anymore, but he, he wants them to, <laughs> you know, he, maybe that maybe this is his way of getting a car, like just putting, just keep doing it, and eventually they'll have to Toyota or no, probably Fords. We're not that we're sponsored by Fords, but uh, maybe Fords will give him a car. Yeah. The best attempted mark of the year. He's um, trying. <laughs> he's doing his best. He's doing his best. Um, Reece Stanley. No one's talked about Reece Stanley. We've got to talk a little bit about Reece Boy. 200 yeah. games. Uh, of AFL footy, uh, he'll probably notch up 150 games at the club some stages this year as well uh, in yeah. the hoops. But uh, hats off to him. Uh, he's he's a bit of a galoot, but he's our galoot, <laughs> which is what, what my wife says. He's our galoot. And we love him. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, I mean, that's a, it's not a word I've used, but I can see, yeah, like that. that's, that's it. And that's what he is. And I was sort of shocked when they went through like the pre-match and his his early career, and I don't know what it is. Maybe the lost time in COVID that I just was like, "Wow, he's been here forever!" Like, and I still feel like he's, oh, you know, he's been at the club for a couple of years. No, no, he's been around for a long time now, and um, I don't know. Can sometimes I think cop a bit of unfair criticism, um, and when you've had the likes of. Of the the bigger ruckman, those you know Brody Grundy in his prime and Nick Nat in his crime in his prime, <laughs> um, and Nick Nat and players like that, and maybe he's not reached those heights, but very very few ruckmen are that. Like they're the absolute standouts, and I think he's been perfectly serviceable for us. I don't like the lineup when he's out of it. Um, I've never liked the lineup when he's been out of it, and I don't know. Good on him. I think he's had a great career. He's he's and he hasn't played many seasons of twenty games, twenty two games, or anything like that. It's all been dribs and drabs, uh, and he's just sputtered along the whole way there um, yeah. across two two clubs. Uh, but he's a two hundred game player. He's a premiership player. He's he's making a case to go again next year. Uh, the way yes. his form has been so far, um, he yeah. was he was okay today, but his season's been pretty good. So um, I guess I don't know whether he wants to go on for another year, but. Um, I don't think we're pushing him out just yet. If he was, if he spent most of the year in the VFL, like a maybe like a Mitch Nevitt or a Jed Buse or something like that, you'd probably more mm-hmm. Jed Buse is, is getting on a little bit more. But 
You think, oh, okay, maybe maybe the end's coming. But um, yeah. he's like, he's still our first choice ruckman. Yeah. Um, and Toby, Toby Conway, he, he went pretty well in the VFL today. I don't think Toby Conway takes his spot against Brisbane next week. But, um, no. but yeah, I, I think Reese is number one for as long as he wants it. Um, and he's getting older and will probably rest him a lot more. But um, he's, he's an absolute star. So congrats to him. Absolutely. Can I can I ask you about before before I uh, before I let you go? I want to ask you about uh, Connor O'Sullivan, the the new number fourteen. What was it like seeing the fourteen on the back again in cat's colours? Was it hard? Was it yeah, good? Yeah, I, I think it it was hard, but it was it was good because it felt exciting and it it feels it feels right. There was a great shot on the um, Geelong Cat socials of him um, standing looking at the Joel Selwood stand. Um, such a great shot and it did yeah. give you a bit of the goosebumps and um, I think it says a lot that this is somebody that, you know, we've just drafted and we're, we're five games in and he gets his first run. Um, I don't I don't know the, the last time I've seen that happen so quickly with us unless I'm forgetting something really obvious, but I feel like... We, we've stuck with that core group, that experience group that we had. So to see someone so young and so new to the club get that run almost straight away, um, I think shows what he's got for us. And it, I was really excited. It's so nice to see someone like that come through that's really highly uh, regarded. And um, I thought he was great today. I didn't think he looked out of his depth. I thought, yeah, all right, you're part of this. And um, you know, it's really nice to see a debutante not be named as as a sub as well. So I love mm-hmm. that he was all there from the get go. So I'm um, I'm all about it. Well, he got that free kick in the first quarter, and then I think a couple of his teammates tried to take the advantage. Uh, yeah. Before I'm like, don't do that. Let the bloke have his first touch <laughs> in AFL footy. Uh, yeah. I think I think he handballed off for his first touch. He, did. And he he had a patch there in that first quarter where he had like four touches. So he's flying yeah. at one stage. Uh, and then, yeah, kind of, you know, as, as you know, I think it was all just coming his direction at one at one point there. And what did he end up with about eleven touches or something like that for the rest of the game? So, um, yes. no, good, a good opener for him. I yeah. suspect, I suspect, and whether you agree or not, but uh, let me know. But I think you'll probably make way for Coladashney next week against Brisbane, a bigger body. Um, if yeah, Charlie yeah. Cameron wins his appeal, he might. Coladashney is probably the best player to go on. And Charlie I'd, Cameron, maybe. I'd say so. And uh, out of the, 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 I mean, we're only a few games in, um, I don't know if Colin ashley has got a second win or something, but there's oh. been a few games where I'm like, has he wound back the clock? Like, is, it, it, there was one, maybe it was round one? And I was. Something like yeah. that. It was early, yeah. Yeah. And I thought, geez, he's had a bit of a, a bit of a, a blinder and he was all over it. Um, so yeah, that's probably fair. And I think that's probably fair enough. I think Brisbane are more than what we've seen so far. Like they did they were in the grand final last year and that wasn't for no reason. So I think their start of the season isn't very true to what they're capable of. Um, and that's a big test up there. So I think that you go with the experience and the best bodies, and it is probably Kolodashny, and he makes way. But um, I, I don't think that's the last that we see of him this year at all. And by all accounts, we're probably in for a really great year. So, I mean, what a what a good way for him to start. Yeah, I, I think the only way he probably the only way I can see him keeping his spot this this game against Brisbane is if um, like as someone else makes way, like a not not because they're out of form or anything, but maybe a Jack Henry or or a Zach Guthrie or something like that. Um, you know, maybe, maybe one of those other sort of tools um, has a bit of a rest. So yeah. I'm not, not sure. But I think more than likely probably go back to the VFL, give him a little taste of AFL footy, um, yeah. let him marinate on that for a few weeks and and then when there's an opportunity to bring you back. But it, it is a tough stretch um, of games coming up. We sort of read them out earlier, but there's four really tough games where – the, we'll we'll need to manage the players because it's going to be a bit of bash and crash type for you. There's a, we're playing against some seasoned, mature teams, big bodies, and we're going to be hurting over the next month. So there will be a need as much as it, it, it's painful to do it sometimes to to rest the bloke to bring in a young guy, but you kind of have to sometimes to to keep your list fresh. Uh, otherwise, you you risk um, doing injuries a bit down the track. So so hopefully hopefully he gets more opportunities anyway. Uh, I mean. Moving we, we have just seen 
what is it, three or four big milestone games in a row for our senior players. And I think when you're having such big milestones, you do realise that the list is is ageing. So, yeah, yeah, those resting those older bodies is probably going to be something that has to be considered and that's probably where they get their where they get their chance. I'm just looking up who's got the next milestone coming up now. I think Jess is really close to 600 goals. Um, okay, yeah. He's probably, probably, I should say, going to tick that off next week against Brisbane if he kicks. I can't remember what he is now, but I think he's maybe four goals away. So there's a very likely he gets that next week. Um, and then the next milestone, it's not a big one, but it'd be Sam DeCon in game 50 against uh, Carlton, um, yeah. against his brother, which would be fun. Um, yeah. 50th game for Sam DeCon. It feels like he's played a lot more than that, but yeah. um, the golden god, as we like to call him, <laughs> um, he's amazing. <laughs> uh, fantastic. Uh, look, 5-0, and oh, can't complain. Uh, no. Where are we going to finish up? Are we top four? Are we gonna are we gonna keep rolling on, or are we gonna come back a little bit in the next in the middle part of the season? Where do you see it playing out from here on in? I conservatively, I think it, from here, if we finish any lower than well, I don't I don't think we finish any lower than than sixth. Like realistically, considering everything, bar an enormous drop off. Um, I don't think we finish any lower than six. Um, and I think if you know that that's where you're going to aim for, then you really need to be obviously aiming for that top four. So um, I'm going to say fourth <laughs> to yeah. be safe is right. where I see it now. I think I think if the Cats um, win, you know, 60 to 70% of the games to come, I think top four is looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, look, we're going to drop a game. We do it. Every team does it. You drop a game, you're not expected to lose, and you and hopefully you win some games you're not expected to win. Uh, yeah. I think the Adelaide one was a nice surprise for me, even though yeah. their, their their season record probably tells you they're not that great. Um, but yeah, like that Adelaide game was probably my favourite win of the year so far. And look, we'll, we'll be okay. I think we just got to get through this this four weeks, um, reassess where things are at. Hopefully, we get through the next four weeks without too many broken bodies and. Um, and you know our VFL list stays healthy as well as well. So we've got some guys to come in there. That'll be great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 great. So hopefully, and I don't think we play a game at Geelong again for another four weeks against. I think it's back at Port Adelaide or something like that. So yeah, it is the it is the, the Port one. I'm fairly sure. Yeah. yeah, home game against Carlton at the MCG um, in two weeks' time. So yeah. that should be it. A cracker. Hopefully, we get about seventy or eighty thousand of that one. That'll be huge. Yeah, I'll definitely beat that one. But that'll be yeah, that'll be massive given how how they're going and those supporters are up and about. Are they ever? <laughs> are they ever? Now, I haven't dropped your episode yet, but you did an interview with Paul James uh, quite some time ago now, and we haven't actually dropped the episode. But I believe that's dropping Tuesday this week. So if you want to see more of Amanda, everyone, um, keep an eye on behind the play. <laughs> Um, you'll be able to see a face on the thumbnail there, so we'll make sure we drop that pretty soon as well. Um, we'll Amazing. have that out to our Patreon members um, at early access. Uh, I might even try and get that out tonight if I can. Usually try to get it out a week early, but I'll, I'll get it out. I was running a little bit late this week. I've been away with the kids on holiday. so. Um, but, yeah. Now, look, thanks for jumping on, Amanda. I think first time for you on the show. This, uh, yeah. Getting some new faces on the show. Um, yeah, it's, been, it's, it's great when the cats have a win. I haven't done one of these shows yet, Amanda. After oh. a loss, I'm kind of, I don't want to lose, but <laughs> no. I want to feel the negative energy. I want to get that other kind of energy coming through as well. Um, yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I know it will happen at some point, but hopefully you'll join us after a loss too one time. We'll see. Tap yeah. my um, little coffee table here because I don't want that anytime soon. So, <laughs> uh, look, thanks for jumping on. Appreciate it. Go, Catters. We'll see you in the next go, one. Hopefully. Yeah, see bye. You. All right. As always, without fail, my favourite guest who's been waiting patiently, or well, favourite guests, here they are, Brendan and Bianca. Go Cats! How's it going? Mate, life is good. Life well, is great. What do you think? The VFL wins, but all, all three of our teams won. The VFL women's team had a win as well. Um, fortunately, we couldn't get along to watch the VFL men today because uh, 
played at the same time pretty much. So but, uh, yeah. good to see them have a win as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the VFLW girls had uh, another win as well, which was uh, come from behind win. another come from behind win. And um, yes. Bright Hawk played her first game. 50, game, 50 and, um, games for Brianna Pratt. Yeah. 50 she games. was great, yeah. And, uh, yeah, um, so it's been wins all around, an entire weekend of wins. Oh, it's been it's been terrific, uh, fantastic. What did you, uh, Bianca? What did you think of Connor O'Sullivan's first game for Geelong? I think he went pretty okay. I didn't see him that much, but I saw him a few times in the in the back line and stopping um, all North Melbourne like Paul Curtis, his goals and yeah. Paul Curtis is a good player for North. He he missed a few today, but he's he's normally pretty dangerous. I always worry about. But him, when when he plays Geelong, I think he's quite dangerous in the forward line. Uh, did you like Reece Stanley? I mean, Reece Stanley was um, he didn't have his best game for Geelong ever, but I was really happy to see him and his kids um, go through the banner and and uh, cut run. They ran out on the ground almost as soon as the siren went. That was funny. I don't know if you saw that. His kids were out there like within two seconds. <laughs> nah, she was very disappointed because she said. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up Reece Stanley in a minute. I'm gonna bring up Reece Stanley in a minute, and then he got brought up, and she got really disappointed. She goes, "I oh, oh. want to bring up Stanley." <laughs> well, we actually haven't talked about him nearly enough yet. So, um, okay. is there anything more you want to say about Reece Stanley? Because I'd love to talk about him a little bit more. He deserves it. He's played 200 games of AFL footy. Oh, you want to know me? You keep talking. Tell, tell us about him. I'll tell you what his disposals were. So he really set up a few goals and. He kept tapping to the people like Tanner Bruin and I think Brandon Parfit has really um, held this side together in the midfield and helped us kick it into the forward line. So he had 12 disposals and 21 hitouts. Yep. Now he took a really good mark too, um, which I was glad about. And um, he, 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 he's fantastic. Like he, he did everything you want him to do. Um, I don't expect much from. I don't I want to say this. I don't expect him to be the best player for, for Geelong. I just want him to play his role and to not try to do more than he's capable of doing. I probably yeah. can't really say that in a nice way, but um, but I think Reese is really good for, for as a he, when he's a good role player for the team. When he does his when he does his role, it really helps his teammates. Um, when he steps away from that a little bit, um, that's when I think things sort of. We struggle a little bit more, but he, he's terrific. Hopefully, he plays next week against Brisbane. Um, hopefully, he's he's feeling fit enough. I, I I know a lot of people probably think he's still ahead of Toby Conway, but I think Toby Conway played good in the VFL today as well. So uh, I want both of them to play, but maybe that's too hard to have two ruckmen. He's been a bit of a whipping for us, but if when you look at it. Since Brad Ottens, he's been our ruckman. Like he's been with us for it feels like such a long time. Like yeah. he's, he's what? Um, didn't he get a? Didn't he climb the? Was he second all time in hitouts now at the Cats or something like that? Was that? Have I got that slightly off. I did hear a stat like that. He's he's just I think against the last the last week or whatever. Um, he, he ticked off another little milestone there. Um, yeah. And he's he's going to take off 150 games for the Cats pretty soon too. I don't know what round that is. I can't quite remember, but um, at some stage this year, he's probably likely to kick that one off, take that one off. Yep, 100. percent So I think we are. Yeah, 200 games is yeah pretty amazing, especially for yeah a ruckman. Yeah, Bianca, what did you think about Brad Close today? We haven't talked about him yet. He kicked four goals, didn't he? And I. Re- um, Dad pointed out that one of his goals it was like in the goal square, and he got he got it he missed it on his boot, and then yeah. he like hit it on his shin. No, or he got the back of his other foot. Yeah. <laughs> How did he do that? Uh, that was uh, yeah. And then you saw the north the North Melbourne defender realized like as he's touched it, he's like pretty much placed it down. He's gone. Oh, the line's over here. Yeah, that's a goal. Uh. Uh, everyone's just no, oh no, just uh, <laughs> pretty unbelievable. Um, do you do you either of you can answer this question? Do you like 
all the score reviews that are happening in football at the moment. Because I noticed that we had quite a few score reviews today at the game. And I can tell you, I was not impressed with some of them at least anyway. Yeah, some of them are just uh, – I think the, the umpires are just scared. <laughs> like, yeah. They're really scared of making a mistake to the point where they're just like, let's just review everything. Just, uh... Yeah, exactly. Oh, 100, hang on. Here's one for you, Banker. 100 Games, 100 Days says you're a future VFLW reporter. I am loving what you're doing getting around to all the VFLW games with the microphone and reporting on the game. And I can tell on the faces of the players that they really appreciate it as well. So – Keep up your good work there. I think you, you've definitely, if the AFL, if, sorry, if the, if the um, AFLW career doesn't doesn't happen, hopefully you stay involved in footy as well. But we know you're going to be an absolute star, win multiple premierships for the Cats um, in the AFLW. We're, we're just around the corner, and you've come in. You're probably just turning up at the right time in in uh, six or seven years just to win that premiership or that go on that three peak of AFLW premierships. I'm sure that's not far away for the girls. I saw um I saw Megan McDonald today. I didn't. Didn't talk to her. I don't, I don't know her, but I did see her at the game and a few of the other girls today. So um, it's nice to see that everyone at the club goes along and supports their teammates. Uh, and the, and the, sometimes the boys go along as well. I think I've noticed uh, a few of them turning up at games as well, which is nice. Uh, she's actually – we couldn't make it to the AFL game today because she actually played two games today. Bianca. Oh, wow. She was up early this morning to play her regular under-9s game and then she got yes. picked to play under-12 girls. Wow. So she played as an eight-year-old, she was playing against under 12s. So it was Unbelievable. Very, very proud of her today. She had a oh, big day. Terrific. Congratulations, Bianca. That's such a big that's such a big step. And uh, especially when you play at a higher age level, um, it's it's really, really hard. And um, I hope you I hope you enjoyed it and you got a bit of a taste for it. Um, because I think you're only gonna get better when you play against better players. And I think that's what you want. If you expose yourself to the, to that really those, that tough competition, it's great. I think you're doing really, really well. Lots of love in the comments too, Bianca. So uh, great stuff, Bianca, from 100 games, 100 days as well. <laughs> Fantastic effort there. Um, what did you think of Jeremy Cameron? Is He he looked, to me, watching him at the game, he looked a little bored, almost like it was, like, can we just get this game over and done with? I don't know if that came through on the TV to you or watching it on the highlights just looks like everything today was just so easy for him. Yeah, like, too easy. Glided up and down like it was a training run. Like it was yeah. just unbelievable. Like um, like I think we said last week, we're going to have to rest him at some point. But Like we rest Tom Hawkins. Yeah, we rest Tom Hawkins. But you can't do it this week against um, Brisbane. But it, mate, it seems like... It seems like all the everyone who has a milestone game um, doesn't isn't tip top the following week. Um, Tommy Hawkins wasn't. Um, mm-hmm. Blitzarbs was okay, was okay today. He, he was fine. Um, but you know you kind of want them to enjoy enjoy the moment a little bit as well. And if that means having an extra wine with their friends and family after the game, or, or, um, or staying up a bit later and have a bit of fun with some friends, that that's fine as well. Um, but I think we need Ray Stanley next week. I, I I want him to play against Brisbane. I think he's yeah. um, one of our better players. Uh, well, we need him need him to do. He's a big body, so we we need him to do that. Um, yeah. Jezza, hang on, comment. Jezza, Jezza's interview after he said he couldn't wait to get home and stay up all night to watch the Masters. <laughs> That's what it is. They've all been watching him and well, him and Closey. Maybe they should stay up late every night because um, I kick ten goals between them. And we know we know they love their golf. Um, absolutely yeah. incredible. On the couch. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's it. Maybe Je- yeah, Jessica can. I think I think the Masters starts in a couple of hours, so you can just stay up and watch that. And then six day game. I think we've got a six day break, haven't we? Until we play Brisbane. So yeah. Um, get down to the club or wherever we do our recovery sessions, and and uh, hopefully freshen up for next year. Yeah. Anyway. It would actually any be other good. comments from you guys before we jump? Uh, any other comments on the game today? I've got a few here, but written down just in case we haven't covered anything. I was going to say, um, is there? A, do you know of any um, like uh, viewing viewing functions or viewing parties that the club put on for interstate games? Oh, um, It'd be such a good well, idea for the interstate games to really get sort of a, a bit of an atmosphere instead of watching it in your um, in the lounge room. 
I don't know if, if that's anything like that's. Yeah, like yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't. Well, we we had been in discussions to to do something uh, at a at a venue that sells alcohol. Um, we haven't sort of haven't progressed that just yet, but that was something for those, especially for those inter- interstate games, having a bit of a watch party. Um, that'd be the way to go. But I, I, I would like to have a family friendly type of in, uh, event as well. Um, I'm not sure. I, I really love the club to set something up. Whether it's, I'm not sure what the facility would be where, where you do it. Um, on one of our summer series episodes uh, during summer, funnily enough, uh, we did talk about the possibility of. Would anyone be interested in watching a game of footy at the at the cinema uh, with a couple of other hundred people? It's probably yeah. you're not able to move around or whatever, but you watch it on a big screen, have a popcorn and coke and all that. Um, you know, it's sort of sort of like I don't know, maybe something a little bit different, but but yeah, maybe I'd I'd love the idea of a watch party. Um, love I love the idea of doing a watch party online as well. I haven't kind of been yeah. able to do that yet. I'm really keen to do that at some point, but uh, to sit here and you know just comment on the game for three hours when I can't get to the game. Um, hopefully great. at some stage this year we'll, we'll get one or two in. Yeah, that sounds great as well, actually. Yeah, if I can somehow find a way to, to do that, I will. I think I'll, I'll have a chat with the rest of the guys in the team and see if um, we're able to, to set something up on that one. It'd be, not, be nice if we could because I know um, I, I every now and then I, I tune into a few of the other channels where they do their, their live watch-alongs, um, and that's good fun, especially in the last quarter when it's close. Um, you get really excited and you want to see what's how the how all the opposition fans are reacting and, and all that when it's good and bad. Well, that's all good fun. Now, Bianca, any other final thoughts from, from your game today or, or the cats or anything like that? Or how do you think the cats are gonna go through the rest of the year? I think Brandon Parfit has really shown up and he's still going he's been a really big he's he's helped a lot in the midfield and lots of tackles and really put us in our place. He's been terrific. I'm, I'm glad you brought his name up, Bianca, because um, we, we've talked about him a little bit over the last few weeks about how impressive he's been this year. I actually don't think Geelong would be where we are now without him and a, and a few others as well. I think the fact that he's bounced back from having a, a below average year for him last year, it's probably fair to say. Uh, maybe part of injuries the year before, but the way he's he's come back and found his good form again, I'm so happy for him. Uh, whether he stays in the team all year, I'm not not convinced that'll happen, especially when Dangerfield and Guthrie and a few others might come back. Um, but what I hope is that he he plays so well that he doesn't let those players come back. I know that's asking a lot, and it probably won't happen, but I hope. He plays so well that he makes it hard for the coaches to actually take him out of the team. 100%. And that would only help Geelong, won't it? If he, if everyone's playing really well, it means Geelong's probably winning lots more games. Yep, 100%. I'm really glad, I'm really glad you brought him up. And Parf, if you're listening, you're kicking it. You're, you're kicking goals, mate. We're loving it. Um, we're, we're loving the way you're going about it. I think everyone in the crowd, you can you can hear the murmurings in the crowd that they're just loving everything he's doing this year. So hopefully he keeps it going. <laughs> Pardon me. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you coming on. Uh, hopefully, we'll get you on after the after the Brisbane game. It'll be a late one next week, probably eleven o'clock on Saturday night. But hopefully, you stay up later, and we'll uh, we'll get you on that one as well. Hundred percent. Go cats. Go cats. Cats. All right. I reckon I've got time for one more guest. One of my favourites. I'll get him on, John. How you going, buddy? How cool is it talking to Bianca? It's like in oh. 10 years from now, we will look back on this as she's being drafted to the John Cats. As yep. I remember talking to you on our uh, podcast yep. that we do. So it's really good, isn't that's it? That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Or, or we'll be able to, you know, she might she might want to interview us or something as well. Maybe she'll be like, yeah. she'll have an <laughs> AFLW career and then she'll yeah. transition into being a reporter for, for the AFL or for Channel 7 yeah. or Fox or something like that. No, I That's love what you guys were saying about Brandon Parfit because he has been playing very well to the point where I sort of feel like it's one of those like fine balances where you want him to, you want Chris Scott to almost regret not putting, not bringing Brandon Parfit back into the lineup when obviously inevitably, inevitably Dangerfield comes back, but not so much to the point where it's like a Jordan Clark situation where he's like, 
well, I'm too too good for this. I need to leave. I need to go back to Frio. Yeah. So it's like that fine balance of, you know, we acknowledge he's playing really, really well, but where is he going to sit? It's going to be the burning question, I think, all week is where does he sit in the lineup between Bruin, between Holmes, Atkins, Dangerfield, Parfit? Like, I, I, and this is, I feel like, a good problem to have. I feel like not enough teams have this problem. Can he can he play in another position that's not midfield? Um, I I mean I think Max Holmes can can play yeah. forward, wing, yeah. defense. Wherever. So yeah, yeah, it's a fair question because if you look at the lineups going into each week, you know we uh, Chris Scott has moved Mitch Duncan back to the half back line. He's moved Max Holmes back to the half back line as like starting points. Ollie Dempsey's been playing on the wing and then he moves forward. So they make the changes. It's almost like the um, lineup going into the day is only there for like the first 10 minutes or first quarter and then it just like completely changes. So I think there's room to move all kinds of players around. But, you know, to what Amanda was saying earlier as well, I like, I like what Amanda was saying. Or It's like we um, we have this, you know, another great problem where, we have not had these issues of injuries so far today. Uh, we're lucky where we have these players come into our team from the VFL, from the Falcons, and they all perform really well. Like, there's, I feel like we never waste anyone who comes into the team, if that makes sense. Like, when the Gosh. last player that I can think of who I was sort of scratching my head over was, remember when we brought in Jack Billings? I think it was like 2020, 2021. Nick like Stevens? Year. Uh, oh, no, sorry, yeah. Um, who was the guy from St Kilda? Oh, sorry, uh, Jack Stevens. I said Nick Stevens, didn't I? Yeah, 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 yeah. Jack Stevens. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. Jack, Jack Stevens. Yeah, that was. Didn't and I remember scratching my head at that, being like, "Oh, I think the game sort of passed him by." Yeah. That was the one. You know, I feel like for every like nine out of 10, 10 moves that we make and people we bring in and out of the club, we sort of we might occasionally get one wrong. But it's like we're very fortunate in that regard. Yeah, all the all the players we trade in, um, and even the three most recent ones um, that stand out: the Bruin and Ollie, Ollie Henry, and um, mm. sorry, Jack Jack Bowes. Um, they've all, uh, I think, for the most part, I think you you can make a strong yeah. case that they are best twenty two. Um, yeah, definitely. I think Bruin definitely. Um, yeah, it's hard to get Ollie Henry out of the side at the moment, it's, even when Gary Rowan yeah. comes back. Um, and Jack yeah. Bowes, a lot, a lot of love out there for Jack Bowes. I still need a little bit more convincing, but um, yeah, especially so after today's I. game, I'm I'm quickly coming around. Uh, my thing with Bowes is that Jordan Clark situation, where it's like, uh, it's not. No one's saying he's a bad player. It's just we have six other better players at that position on the field right now. So, um. And I think that he could definitely come in and be serviceable. But, you know, like, and this is probably a conversation for the second half of the year when we start, when it starts to get colder, when the injuries start to pile up, when the older players start to feel a little bit more. That's why I was glad that, you know, we rested Hawkins today. I think that was a really good yeah, move. Didn't bring danger back. And um, uh, who was it who filled in for Hawkins? Shannon Neal. Shannon Neal, yeah. I think he, he played a great, like... I'm not going to say, like, his career is not going to live and die in this game, but he played a fantastic game. Three goals were, were spectacular. Yeah, and no, exactly right. Um, I mean, we might have been a bit not as glowing of Shannon Neal if he'd missed a couple uh, yep. and maybe finished with yep. one goal three. Um, yeah. Because he wasn't he didn't get a stack of it um, and wasn't sure. clunking everything that came his way. Um, so, sure. look, he's probably not – he played very well. I'll give him that. Um it's he's still see, well behind. I think, that, I think no, but I disagree because I think the difference there is that in the past, when our we've always relied on our top tier talent to mm. push the team forward to get those wins to get over the line, and you know the Zach Guthrie types, the Brandon Parfit types, the Shannon Neal types, the ones who can just sort of like fall by the wayside and you might not notice. That's when we were in our losing seasons or not not performing so well. Whereas the difference this year, I feel is similar to like what I was saying last time is like in our premiership year, it was all of our younger guys and our, you know, next tier players. They all stepped up. 
And I think that what Shannon Neal did today, like, sure, you can you can you can box score and you can be like, oh, well, he only got seven touches, yeah, he yeah. did three goals, but of course he did because it's North Melbourne. But like, it's still a team that he played really well against, and he was still supported by the teammates around him. He still did his role, and his role, like, what are we asking of him? No, he did, we're, he was... we're not asking for him to to take over the game. So I think. Where we're at right now, he did what he needed to do, and I think he can build on that. So it's, it, that's just where I, I I feel like I'm at with it. No, I, I think you're right. I think fair enough. Um, I think probably another a bloke that could get another rest or a few rests this year would be Mitch Duncan. Um, he was yeah. okay today, but he, he's one that you'd really yeah. – you don't want to push him too hard during the regular season, and assuming we're making finals at this point, but – um, yeah. But yeah, he's one that you know every every six weeks or something, seven weeks, give him a, give him a week off. Um, hopefully, um, yeah. injuries don't get him. Uh, hopefully, we've got the we've got um, the option to rest him rather than being yeah. forced upon us. But he's one. Uh, I know we've already rested Tui and and a few others as well. I don't know if there's any younger players that it's probably that sort of those developing players like uh, a Jolly Clark probably. Didn't hasn't played a lot with being subbed up, subbed out last week and yeah, being sub for, for this, this week. week. So they've yeah. almost given him a week off, really. If you think about it like that, um, <laughs> do they want to keep him in the side? Yeah. Uh, I think maybe next week's the time to make way, which would kind of suck, really, because he's been subbed out. He's been subbed twice but now, but yeah. it's a good problem to have. Like we're deep right now. Yeah, is the yeah. way I see it. You know, and here's the thing: I think because I've been listening to all the other um, people earlier speaking about, you know, the run over the next five, six, seven weeks, it's going to be really brutal and it will be. But I think for where we're at right now, I think a lot of clubs are more scared of us than we're scared of them. And I think we can take that confidence with us, whereas I don't feel like the other clubs really have that right now. Do you think other clubs rate us right now? Or they're like, ah, oh, Geelong's had an easy fixture. They're beatable. Uh, they're not the same team they used to be a few years back. Um, I still think this early season form doesn't mean a hell of a lot. Yeah. It's great to set yeah. up your season, but I don't think it means a lot in terms of um, how hard you are to beat in the mid part yeah. of the year. But I'm not going to change my stance next week if we lose in Brisbane to the Lions. I still think we'll go into the week after to Carlton at the MCG, and I think that that will be for me the more telling mm -hmm. result, you know. And then we've got the D's, um, yeah. we've got Port Adelaide coming up, so. I know that they're going to be tough, but I don't think it's going to be like a. I think we might lose one or two. I don't. I don't see us losing all of them. But even you know, <laughs> even if we do, I'm I'm still not too concerned because I still think we have the depth that we need and we can pull it together on the back half of the season. You know, if you think in years gone by, basically the season gets started around sort of round 14, round 15, and then for the next sort of eight weeks, that's where it's really won and lost. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah, I, I feel I feel okay. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I think the first month really is – it doesn't really count in terms of form. It's it's like bank what you can. Get out of the first month on a bit with as many yeah. wins as you can. Set your season up. Remain and, healthy. And, if we stay healthy, that's, that's my oh. win. More and we just, anything, you know, if we, if we come into, if we finish round five, if we finished at two and three, we wouldn't have the luxury of ma managing players because we'd have to be. Yeah. Every win is is every game's crucial. We just don't. We wouldn't have that right or opportunity to do it. So we, we're so yeah. lucky now that we've we've got these wins and you know the draws fallen the way it has and the teams that we've played maybe have have been a, a tad off like Adelaide. Yeah, you know, we probably expected a little bit more from Adelaide. And, we got St Kilda and we got the yeah, dogs. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know we can only play who you can play. But I, I, just, I'm, I feel so glad that we've just yeah. got through yeah. the first five weeks and the real season starts no, now. Right. By the moment says it sounds like a throw throwaway comment, but it's not. Like the only the only stat that really matters at the end of the day for for everyone is what's in the win column, and <laughs> that's where we're at. Like. Um, you know, I think like what you're saying, like I thought the Adelaide win in Adelaide was really impressive. Now it looks less impressive now, but you're still out there winning those games, slugging them out. Sure, we might have lost the Saints, but what are the Saints now? You know, the other yeah. thing is like, you know, look at Richmond right now. Richmond must be looking up at the calendar just thinking like, my God, how is it only round five? We've still got another 19 weeks of this. Wow. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and they're in shambles. Yeah. So it's like, that, I mean, that's obviously like the extreme worst case scenario for teams right now. But I think we're in a place where we can take on the best and also we're sort of proving ourselves as one of the teams to be feared more so than um, more so than not. And that's where, you know, if you asked me at the start of the season about this run, I would have been nervous about it going into it. But now, I, I, like, I feel good. I feel like, you know, the job today, obviously, it wasn't to beat North Melbourne. It was it was to, to really beat North Melbourne by as much as we could, and we did that. We put up, what, 134 points in the end or something like that? Like, yeah. that must have been one of our biggest scores in a really, really long time. And it didn't feel like we dominated that much. It was like, oh, okay, 134 points. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, we'll take that. Um, yeah, didn't, it was a professional know. win. It felt like everyone played their role. And this is what yeah. I was saying earlier about Shannon Neal. It was like he stepped in, he did what he needed to do. You know, I was at the game and I was watching, you know, from the forward lines in the third quarter and Tyson Stengel still running all over the field. Ollie Henry still, you know, he didn't have a huge game, but he was still doing his bit everywhere that he needed to all over the field. And it, it didn't matter about the stat. I think everyone saw how well he played regardless of how many touches he had or how many goals he kicked. So I, I feel good. Yeah, I think um, I think sometimes there's, there's an element of luck in footy when it comes to getting involved in the in the play and in in getting possessions. I mean, it's what you do with it when you get it is the crucial part, especially when it comes to playing your role. Um, there, yeah. There'll be times where, um, and I knew it was coming for Ollie Dempsey, that he'd have a, a quieter game. Um, he started the season yeah. off and, Absolutely on fire, and and today he was not really cited a hell of a lot. Um, but I think that was probably more just the way the game was being played. It was just a slightly different style of footy, uh, and North was just you know possessing the ball a hell of a lot. I got some question marks about. Were the you way at North the game? Played. Yeah, I was. I was just like North. Just yeah. where were you uh, sitting? Uh, I was sitting behind the well, sort of to the right of the opposition interchange bench um, on the boundary okay. line there, sort of, mostly on the wing. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Um, but just watching North move the ball, thought, this is great footy. Um, they're not going to – they're, they're awful, getting heaps of possessions, but they weren't doing anything with it. Yeah. So. Did you notice how North Melbourne would start in the, in the full back line, you know, after we kicked it behind or whatever, and then they'd sort of move out to the 50 on the left, and then they'd try and move it inside, but they kind of retreat a little bit, and then they'd move it back. And because they kept making so many yeah. just basic skill errors, we would basically turn it over and then score again. And it just happened over and over again. And it just – yeah, it was not to disparage North, and that's not really what we're here to do. But at some point, it's like, ah, oh, can we can we fix this? Because it felt like even their senior players, like Luke Davies Juniak, was just making skill after skill error after skill, skill error. So, yeah, I think I think Geelong, and I think Geelong's playing the percentage game. We mm. we're not necessarily going to be dominating the play for hundred hundred minutes of footy, but we're doing enough that. Ultimately, we'll come out on top. We're strangling sides. Yeah, yeah we're going to. There'll be some times where we'll leak. We'll leak some goals, but I think overall, yeah. it's like it's like playing poker. You know, you don't win every hand of poker you play. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you play smart for long enough, yeah. you'll come out on top um, if you're good enough. Yeah, that's a great example. Um, I was sitting at the um, sort of like the cheer squad end, the Joel Selwood stand, just behind the goals to the left, and I mean the main thing that I noticed for the day when we were in forward was Ollie Henry sitting at full forward, Tyson Stengel sitting at half, like full forward with him. And they were just all day, just split out each in each direction. Jeremy Cameron was sitting up at half forward and he's, I really love what Jeremy Cameron's doing at the moment where he's almost not a forward in a sense. He's sort of like playing between the midfield and half forward and bringing it in and getting the handoffs and kicking it to those guys. And I remember there was one moment I think it was in early in the second quarter and Ollie Dempsey and Ollie Henry were both just sitting at the, the goal square, just waving their arms, like giving the ball and no one was yeah. manning up on them. And yeah. Jerry, Jimmy Cameron's like, sure, I could do this or I could get it myself. It's like, this is what I'm saying. It's like, we have so many options right now where we can go in any direction we want. It was, it was like, it's one thing to watch it on TV, which we, I've got it on in the background right now. We're re-watching it. But to see it in person, to see our forward line, work in motion in live action it was it was a beautiful thing to watch it, it totally was and it's and it's a different as much as the, the team is mostly the same as 2022 uh, it just it yep. feels like we've tweaked yeah, things enough better. to be yeah, relevant skilled. again 
Yeah, it's, yeah. it's um, and watching, and I just want to make a comment on on Jeremy Cameron. Um, he's he's a freak of an athlete. He's a, yeah. a dead eye in front of goal, but his yeah. footy IQ, I did, probably didn't appreciate as much until this year. I'm just seeing yeah. what he yeah. does around the ground. Yeah. Um, it's just too easy for him. Um, I, I mean, yeah. he's got all the physical. There's other players that have got similar physical attributes that can and that can run all day and do all that sort of stuff. But he's a smart yeah. footy player. He's a footy player. You know. Yeah, you were talking with someone earlier, and I think you guys were sort of having this conversation where you felt like Jeremy Cameron was bored out there. And I, I like again, I sort of disagreed with that. I didn't think he was bored. I think he's actually trying to not entertain himself, but I think he's trying to sort of just expand on his repertoire. It's like, okay, yeah, I can play the full forward role. I know how to do that. What else can we do? And we're doing these things. Where we're moving him all over the field and half forward line trying all these different things to get him more involved because he wants to be more involved because he loves playing footy because he loves playing that role and he loves inspiring the people around him. And that's where I really see like that half, that mid to half forward line is really lifted in years where we haven't seen that at all. And he's sort of taken the reins of like, you know, even with Hawkins out today, it's like, I love seeing Jeremy come and be like, this is my team. Let's go guys. Let's do this. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't feel like we've seen that in years past. I love what you just said there. This is my team. It feels that way as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Jez is taking over with that. now. He, he was yeah. he's incredibly unselfish. Uh, there was a couple yeah. of funny moments where um, he got one close, he took a mark, and then he got it off, got the handball off close, he kicked the goal, and then he returned the favour. Yeah, ten yeah. minutes later. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Those two, those two need to be stopped. I did. A, I put a post up on Twitter where I had the stepbrothers photo and I replaced their faces. <laughs> those guys. I watched Jeremy Cameron's uh, blog from when they're in Adelaide because I know the Brad Close used to live in Adelaide. And he was like, right. take chaperoning him around. <laughs> like, are they just the most best friends ever? <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. They need to be stopped. And I see, like, they they keep passing the ball to each other, and it's like, yeah, Dara, I'll get you back. It's just like. I love the bromance that's going on there. The other, the other bromance I wasn't aware of was the, the Zach Tui and Marie Stanley bromance. I wasn't, I wasn't aware that. Oh, that was really? A thing. I have not seen that. Tell, tell me. About yeah, that. oh no, they were. They, they did. The club put out a video through the week uh, where um, Tui was talking to Reese about his two hundredth, and, um, mm. and then it, somehow the conversation got on to Reese Stanley caught a plane um, over to Ireland in twenty twenty two to celebrate um, Tui's mm. marriage to his to his partner. Yeah. Um, and surprised him. He wasn't expected to be cool. there. And it was like, oh, really? Oh, That's and, great. And they're just giving each other crap the whole time. Just, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's fun. And a Man, couple of moments today, you can sort of see that they were really tight. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think they came to the club around a similar time. I don't know what year it was. I think Reese was 2015, but I can't remember exactly when it was, uh, when Zach came over. But uh, uh, yeah, it was, around, it was like around about that time anyway. 2019, yeah. It, it, it is interesting how certain personality types will sort of – you don't think they're necessarily going to be best mates. I wouldn't have thought yeah. Jez or Icy would be best mates, but um, – Yeah. But, Watch yeah, Jez's no. vlog. It's, it's like they're yeah. inseparable. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good fun. All yeah. right, mate, I might wrap the show. Right. I really appreciate you coming awesome. on. I think, it's, I think it's your um, it's your third or fourth time on the show now, isn't it? I think it feels, feels about that. Yeah, anyway. it's maybe, coming around. Maybe even more. No, I really appreciate Until you, next you waiting week. so long to come on as well. No, it was easy. Okay, we'll, we'll right. finish the year 23-0, and 0, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> smooth sailing from here on in. This next month will be a walk. 20, we'll look back in 28. Go, was it what were we worried about, John? <laughs> what were we worried yeah, exactly. about? We shouldn't have been worried. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good on you, mate. You take right. care. See ya. Guys. Thank you so much. There's 21 people in the in the chat at the moment. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, at this time, an hour and a half into the show, you're still here. Thank you for watching. Um, really appreciate it if you could give us a sub if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel and um, and maybe try and uh, jump in next week as well. We, we do this every week pretty much. I think there was one week we, for whatever reason, um, we couldn't get it up. But, um, but, yeah, we love having the chats and just hearing all the different perspectives and even if we disagree sometimes that's great as well i love hearing how other people see the game uh some of us see it differently on the telly and we're at the ground and depending on where you're sitting and um and we've got our own little biases as well so um i think that's i think it's great and i love doing this and interacting with geelong supporters and and, and supporters from other clubs as well so um thank you so much uh don't forget to check out 
as I said earlier through the show, Jake did his VFL uh, report today, so that's on the Patreon. Um, you can get free access to that at the moment with a with a free seven day trial. Um, but you, in terms of the public sort of stuff on the YouTube channel, we've got the chaps doing their match review of the North game uh, Monday night. That should drop Monday night. It'll always be on. It always goes up on Spotify uh, and the podcasts a bit earlier. Um, but the video version will probably drop later Monday night. Worst case scenario, Tuesday morning at some stage. So, guys, again, much appreciated. I love chatting to you guys. I love the cats. How good is it to support this Geelong Football Club? We're so lucky. I'll see you in the next one, everyone. Take care. Bye.